Hello everyone, I'm Leo K. I'm here today with yet another very cool guest. This one was requested by a number of you in the comments, so I was super excited to uh, get him on board. Master Assassin, hello. Hello everybody, uh, Master Assassin. I make a lot of Assassin's Creed related content, other games here and there as well, but I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for uh, requesting me. It's gonna be an honor. Uh, what I was gonna do is just actually like start out with some some questions for you. And one of them was, you know, your channel name and icon are obviously associated with iconic parts of Assassin's Creed as a series. You know, everyone has a right. different story for how they first got into the games, what caught their attention. So my question is, how did you start enjoying Assassin's Creed? What made you want to play it? I think my first Assassin's Creed game was Brotherhood, and I was maybe, like, I feel like I'm a lot younger than people think. Brotherhood came out when I was, like, seven i want to say curious about wouldn't let me play violent video games back then so i would go to my neighbor's house to play it and even then they still didn't like that damn but the first game i played myself that really got me into the series was unity when that came out mm. and that's actually how i discovered your channel as well all your great unity videos and tips awesome awesome yeah unity is a, a lot of people's introduction to the series you know for, for various reasons good and bad yeah. but um, Definitely I noticed that it's a it's an important game for sure and and brotherhood as well like I think what makes brotherhood so nice to recommend for for beginners is that it's just such a smooth game like everything just kind of like flows really well and it's just pleasant to, to really play polished yeah, yeah. I, I love how you had to you know use a little bit of stealth just to play the game as well I have a funny story oh, yeah. uh, about that uh, brotherhood came out uh, when I was in high school at the time, you know, there, there were still blockbusters. At lunchtime, I went to a blockbuster with my friends to just buy the game. The lady at the counter was like, are you over 18? And I was oh. not over 18. And I was like, yep, with a completely straight face. Oh, yeah. Just just social Sweet. stealthing the interaction. No. And, and she believed me and she sold me the game. And then we went to my friend's house and immediately played the multiplayer because... Uh, that was kind of like one of the big selling points of the game. It's like, oh my god, AC is gonna have multiplayer for the first time. What is oh, it gonna yeah. be? You know. Wow. Then I went home and just kind of locked myself in my room and played the story for an unknown number of hours. <laughs> oh, that, that's awesome. I, I did something similar when Halo Reach came out, I remember, but... Awesome game. Yeah. I think Halo Reach is amazing. It's my favorite Halo game. Oh yeah, same. Awesome. Yeah, I, I just, I love the vibe of just, like, this is how, you know, some of this terrible stuff, like, first transpired, you know, yeah, for, for, sure. for then, years we'd been hearing about, like, oh, you know, Reach, and then you actually get to, like, see it. Uh, and the ending, man, the ending gets me every time. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, um, what inspired you to make your channel? Interestingly enough, I was actually listening to you and Altair Stealth's uh chat of course and you guys were talking a lot about swifty unknown mm -hmm. like that was he was actually one of the biggest original inspirations for my channel like i wanted to be what altair stealth is right now basically when i first started gotcha but i quickly realized that uh first of all i wasn't very good at making those gameplay videos and then also i didn't really have the patience for it as well like pretty hard to do for those who don't know and so well, I really just started making like discussion videos, reviews. I think my first review that I ever did well was on Ghost Recon Breakpoint. You, Swifty Unknown, and Fizzy were like my three biggest inspirations for starting. So mm, I could see that. Partly why I say this is a full circle moment, like I said earlier. Right. But another reason is it was on one of my earliest videos. I had maybe like 50 subscribers, but you commented on one of my videos and you were like the first channel. I had ever known that commented on my stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like at a time where I was like super demotivated as well. I was like considering quitting really. And then I saw your comment and that really like pushed me to keep going. It was like, dude, like you, you, it's, it's one thing to like hear nice words from a stranger, but when, like when you see something from someone you really respect, it's like, oh man, well, cause I didn't even think my videos were good, but if he's saying my videos were good, then all right, I got, I got to keep doing this, you know? So 
I thank you a lot for that. And that's why I said this was really like full circle for me. That's so cool. That's crazy. I don't even remember like what video that would have been on, but it was, yeah, it was like a gameplay video I did on Odyssey, like way towards the start. Mm, yeah. I vaguely remember something like that, but I mean, hey, if I commented on it, it's because I actually liked it, so... I mean, I appreciate that, man. That was... That's so cool. I'm so glad you didn't quit. Like, look at you now. I know. I know. That's why it's, it's crazy to think about. Like, if, if you didn't comment then, I might not be talking to you right now. It's insane. Yeah, wow. What a, what a just weird experience now that you <laughs> point it out. That's, that's so cool. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, like uh, about what you said on, you know, gameplay showcases and the like, it really is mostly patience. I think people are unaware of, you know, how hard it is to do those things. Well, they are aware of it more now than they used to be. Right. But uh, the other thing that people might not really like have a grip on is just how annoying it is to make oh. those kind of videos. Because it, it really does get pretty annoying and, you know, people commiserate where it's like, oh, you know, like we had to restart like this many times, etc. Um, yeah, especially unity man that yeah definitely i mean that's something just unexpected happens and it ruins the whole thing yeah yeah and it's so it's so nice to watch smooth unity footage and that is my preferred method of enjoying the game as well yeah um, but when you make it yourself like it's it really puts you through the ringer and actually that leads into my next question which was assassin's creed has many fewer discussion channels compared to those who post gameplay or challenge runs and I think a lot of my audience knows a bit about what it's like to make stuff like that but I don't think too many of them are as familiar with the tough parts of producing discussion videos so are there some challenges with this kind of work you'd like more people to be aware of and think about and I mean this is a cool question for me as well because I do dip into that kind of content on occasion and people seem right. to like it so any difficulties i'd say probably one of the hardest part is just coming up with new ideas yeah so, yep <laughs> yeah. um we're, we're lucky with assassin's creed because there's new games like every couple years or every year sometimes even mm -hmm. so there's usually something to talk about but it can be pretty difficult and that's why i try and get creative and come up with like new series like the video i just uploaded yesterday is a series i started not too long ago so and that's been really fun just to keep it fresh and things like that. Sometimes I'll do gameplay videos, like I did the Mirage Permadeath playthrough. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say coming up with new videos and like, it's also weird, like any other time you kind of branch out from Assassin's Creed once you start, it's like the video does significantly worse initially. Yes. Tend to realize. Yes. Oh, it's it really hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I did like this huge Spider-Man 2 video this oh, one yeah, right? right there yeah and it did like compared to my assassin's creed videos did absolutely nothing but like, i mean yeah like so much work that's usually how it goes yeah but it's like i don't just want to be handcuffed to assassin's creed because that can get kind of boring, boring. Yeah. yeah you get it like you oh, god you understand thank you like I <laughs> that is <laughs> i feel so seen and understood and then, and then you and then you see all the comments on that video, like, oh, but where's Assassin's Creed? Or, like, it's yep. some kind of Assassin's Creed-related joke or something. I'm like, yep. I'm like, like yeah. I think in uh, Spider-Man 2, because Miles, Miles Morales, he's looking he for this character right? named Martin Lee. Mm, yeah. And everyone in the comments is like, give me Lee, like Connor Kenway. Like, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that happens on my videos as well, where it's like, I'll post something else, and then someone will just be like, are you gonna play Unity again? And I'm just oh like, yeah, look, nice. man, let me live. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, again, I was just listening to your all, your chat with Altair stuff, and you were talking about that, which I thought was really funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially like, especially that's to how you. I discovered your channel as well. I that's how your Unity videos is how I found you. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. really funny to hear that. I think that's how most people found me, which you know does explain why there is such a fervor for like, hey, are you gonna play this again? Because it's like exactly. this is the reason you know people discovered me, and and that's what they found cool. But I mean, that kind of goes back to what you were saying, where like we're lucky that we get new games fairly regularly. But when it comes to people who mostly are just fans of Unity, like by itself. Yeah. then they do kind of expect content and releases like on that one game and it's very hard to do that because at this point like i've done most of what i wanted to do with it um yeah especially like 
I'm making videos on the entire series. I can't imagine only one game. Like, there's only so much you can talk about and yeah, yeah. show. So yeah, that's why I'm happy that you know stuff like Mirage released that fairly yeah. interested in and I enjoy playing, and uh, the ACU fixes mod that kind of like oh, yeah. makes a few gameplay tweaks. Uh, I still have more things I want to do uh, with that. But I mean, if those things weren't the case, then Assassin's Creed would be very, very difficult for me to like keep you know, expounding on and, and, and talking about. And I mean, this is actually another question I had where obviously, you know, we all have different favorites in the series mm. and some some players are better than others at enjoying like more of the games. And this is something that, you know, I, I think people will hear me say and be like, whoa, no way, you know, that doesn't make sense because I tend to like, um, you know, perpetuate a certain image of myself or whatever, but I genuinely do try my best to see the good in every single AC game that releases. Like, Oh, I do, I do the same, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, like, that's something I noticed, like, you put some effort into doing as well, where it's like, you know, yes. you like, you know, parts of Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, like, you find something to enjoy about all the games. And so, you know, what I want to ask is, in those games that you perhaps don't like as much, for me, I find that really, like, damages my ability to come up with ideas or to come up with, like, desire to talk about them. Like, is that something you ever deal with? Um, initially when I started my channel, yeah, that was really hard, especially because it took me a while to come around on Odyssey. Like, mm -hmm. for those who were at my channel at the beginning, I really disliked Odyssey at first. But I think over time, I kind of opened my mindset on that a little bit. Same. But it... They are, yeah, they are definitely a little bit harder to talk about consistently, and it's not only because, like, I might not enjoy them as much, but, it's, like, people are way more divided on them. As yeah, well, which can be yeah. really annoying. That's the rough part. So, yeah. It's hard to kind of take a stance that everybody, there's no stance that everybody will agree with, it feels like, so. Yeah, definitely. You just, yeah, um, I, I don't know if I would it's not too difficult for me to come up with ideas, but it's definitely a, a bit more anxiety-inducing talking about those games because right, you just right. know it's going to be controversial. You're, no you're going to get pushback from somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. So you just kind of have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. That's uh, probably something that is a unique property of discussion content that, you know, pure gameplay content isn't really as subject to. True, yeah. So that's something that, you know, I think people should keep in mind and, and, and think about. Every once in a while, I decide to try making new kinds of videos, new formats or styles that I haven't really had too much presence in or experience with. And it's always a bit tricky to figure out. And we touched on it, you know, a few minutes ago, but from scrolling your channel, you know, I get the feeling you have this tendency at times too, where you do come up with new ideas. You're not just doing the same expected formats, you know, you dip into yeah. new concepts, new structures, you keep things fresh for yourself and the viewers. And even when it comes to just, you know, the opinion pieces that, that you're known for and the discussion videos themselves, you come up with new ideas and angles for those fairly often, which I consider your most impressive skill. Thank um, you. Just because, I mean, if you're someone who has tried to, you know, dip into discussion content or even consider it your main thing, like, that is definitely one of the, one of the hardest parts. Because it's like, anyone can come up with ideas, but very few people can come up with ideas that are actually going to catch attention and be interesting and worth exploring. And I think people are not super aware of how hard that actually can be. Um, uh, yeah. So how does that usually go for you? Like, do you have any advice for creators who maybe want to do more of that, but hesitate? Because I, I do know that there are a number of people who watch me that, you know, they maybe don't really want to do so much gameplay showcase stuff. They maybe want to do more opinion related things and they're not really sure how to like get a start in that. Yeah. So, um, my, my advice, so what I do, cause you know, I'm, I upload quite frequently, so I mm -hmm. have to come up with videos very often. So I have like this entire Google doc of just video, video ideas. It's like, hundreds of pages long at this point there's stuff on there from years ago i still haven't done and i just keep adding to it like sometimes ideas will just hit me so at the most random times 
like as I'm about to go to sleep is a great example. Mm -hmm. I'll get like an idea in my head. I'm like, oh, great. I got to go write this down. So I think what really helps too is to put yourself in the eyes of a viewer. So like I yes. think a lot um, if I were someone who really liked Assassin's Creed and was watching stuff like what video would I want to watch? Mm -hmm. So I think that's really helpful too. And uh, yeah, just trying to brainstorm creative ideas and series like like two series i'm particularly proud of is like i i try and play a game for as long as i can and then when i die it just abruptly ends yeah that's been i actually fun. love those i think those are really really cool yeah and then the how far can i get into a game without being spotted that's been really fun as well so ideas like that it's kind of what keeps me going to be honest because it just keeps it fresh it you know, it gives me something new to do, a little bit of a different style. Mm -hmm. It's quite dynamic as well. I mean, you yourself do not know, like, how far you're going to be exactly. able to get. Like, you yeah. can suspect you have, like, some basic idea, but when it comes down to it, you know, sometimes, like, something random or unlucky happens, and it's just like, boom, yeah. you got to cut right there, right? Like In AC3, I was, like, on a ship with uh, Haytham. And I, I, I like went to jump and like the game just completely bugged. He just fell off the ship. I don't even know what happened. It was the weirdest bug. You just had to hold that. Yeah, it, it, man, it was brutal. I accidentally, oh, this is actually embarrassing. I don't know why I'm bringing this up again, but in that video as well, when I was Connor, I was on top of a tree and I couldn't find the way down and I couldn't find anything to jump into. So I ended up falling to my death and that's how that ended. So... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's kind of it allows for a lot of a uh, comedy in a sense as well, though. So definitely. I mean, we've all been victims of, you know, Assassin's Creed movement systems one way or another, oh, yeah. wh whether it's due to our own skill issue or the game just deciding like, hey, like, I'm going to mess with you today. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to take the wheel from you. Yep. Are there any games that you're looking forward to? I mean, one or I guess two in particular that are kind of the talk of the town nowadays. Uh, let's go with three even. So Ghost of Tsushima is getting a PC port. Oh, yeah. That's super exciting for obvious reasons. One of my favorite games of all time, so... <laughs> Mine too, yeah. Do you want to play uh, Legends together when, when that releases on PC, the co-op oh, mode? Down. Yeah, that'd be fun. Sick, awesome. Uh, Rise of the Ronin and Dragon's Dogma 2 are both coming out, like, tomorrow, basically. Technically, Dragon's Dogma 2 in, like, eight hours today. Uh, so Rise of the Ronin obviously has a lot of similarities to... Assassin's Creed, you know, some people are calling it Team Ninja's AC fanfiction. I don't know yeah. if you have a PS5. Um, I do. Okay, cool. So is is that a game that is, like, on your radar at all? Like, are you curious about it? It is. I've 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 been watching videos on it and kind of keeping up with it. I don't think I'm going to play it, like, off release. I might wait for, like, a sale or something. But yeah, yeah. it definitely looks interesting. Kind of like a, almost like a Ghost of Tsushima Assassin's Creed hybrid in a sense. So yeah. It looks pretty fun. I'm, I mean, I'm not too sure. I've been, I don't know too much about it yet. I've kind of tried to keep the spoilers away and stuff, but right. I'm definitely uh, keeping my eye on that one too, because I just love the setting of Feudal Japan in general as well. So mm -hmm. I like I'll how more games from there. <laughs> I like how there is, you know, more urbanization at that time period that the game is set in. There's more buildings, you know, you, you get a little grappling hook. There's more like a rooftop climbing and engagement and stuff like that. Stealth seems like a bigger deal than in Team Ninja's previous games. And, you know, all that stuff obviously appeals to me. And then there's just the the premise of the setting kind of just seems like it, it fits like an AC-ish story super well also because it's like it's set in a time when uh, Japan's borders were kind of forcibly opened by uh, Americans and this kind of like destabilizes everything and you know the, the previous structures and, and social norms and everything begin to kind of change in, in a very like painful way and uh, the player characters in the game because you create two one of them is yourself, and one of them is what's called your blade twin. And I've seen this, yeah. Yeah, like... You have to, like, make a choice, right, on... Yeah, which one do you play as, and which one do you have to end up finding, right? Which is kind of like a little bit of a Cassandra Alexios thing going on. Yeah, for sure. Kind of it's... reminds me of Dishonored 2 as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, whichever one you don't pick, Emily or Corvo, like, they're petrified, and then you have to, like, find your way back to them, right? Yep. 
Um, I think it's also really cool that, like, in the text of the game, you are assassins. You are silent uh, killers. For sure. Just another game that feels very Assassin's Creed, but it's not, like, quite in the universe, you know? So I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think the one thing that a lot of people have been talking about is, like, you know, like, the graphics don't look the best or the environment. Yeah, which yeah. I which really care is part of the much, course but... for Team Ninja as well. Yeah. But, I mean, it still looks like a lot of fun. So I definitely want to check it out when it goes on sale or something like that. Yeah. I was just curious to get your thoughts on it since, like, you know, you do cover a lot of Assassin's Creed and the games obviously have quite a few similarities, so. Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to, you know, have me react to this video right here and, and kind of, like, take a look and sort uh, of see how that goes? I'd love, to, I'd love to hear your thoughts and which one you think was the best as well. Go ahead and do this and i'll probably pause sometimes to like uh talk about this oh yeah feel free on occasion it's been quite a few months since i made this type of video for unity a lot of you guys really seem to like that video and the concept though so i figured let's do it again but for assassin's creed mirage i actually wanted to make this video closer to when the game came out but i got really busy and i wanted to give people time to learn the mechanics some more and all the cool tricks you can do so we can get some artful submissions but like last time i sent out a community post about a week and a half ago asking you guys to send me your best assassin's creed mirage stealth clips with the requirement that they be 60 seconds at the maximum and be stealth focused i didn't get any submissions of a guy just throwing coins around this time Probably because oh you God. can't do that in Mirage. I'll have them numbered 1 through 5 to make it a bit easier as well. But with all that out of the way... I already know I, I, I have a deep respect for whoever submitted that because that was a 1-2 and you know how I feel about those. That's <laughs> me. That's all me right there. Oh, okay. We so, haven't gotten into the clips yet, yeah. So you are kicking ass already. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, let's get into the first clip. You really just ruined that lady's day. This is my favorite part of this one right here. Oh, nice. Clean. Yeah, that's really sick. Yeah, I thought that was a great one as well, just to kind of like introduce everything, start things off, kind of smooth run, smooth mission. I know a lot of people enjoy um, making showcase content and making stealth clips of that specific mission. You know, I see it quite often for good reason. <laughs> Serves a fate far worse than the one of my blade. My message will reach the order. That's pretty sick. The bun. I need to flee. Of that cover animation as well. Mm -hmm. Who's using the uh, eject mod? Ooh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah this player really loves the like the swinging. Yeah, the swing this around. This one is by uh, like on on the on the bars like that. Like that's. Yeah, the it's twice they did it and to great effect yeah they had a they it's the same person they had a similar clip for when i did one for unity and they did a very similar thing lots of swinging and stuff it's pretty cool awesome i love it when you can kind of like feel out a player's like signature style like that yeah it's something sure. that i think is Have really, some really personality great. in there as well mm -hmm. yeah that one is probably like currently my favorite but we'll see all right, all right. we'll see uh how, how the rest of them do Oh, 
Oh, fire knife. Okay, so this player is a bit of a pyromancer. <laughs> Clearly, yes. It was cool though, he was the only person all the submissions I got who used a torch, so I had some respect for him on that. Yeah. God, lots of explosives, lots of flames. Oh, that's pretty sick. He's in the haystack like that. That's really sick. I love the theme. I love that this player went with like fire and explosions and blinds and very like, you know, incendiary kind of play style, which I think is really cool. We don't we don't typically see like elemental stuff, you know, chased after so hard as a, as a theme in, in these kind of videos, typically. Exactly. I really like the clips are a little bit more unique and creative like that. So mm -hmm. I, I love your, your choice to to include this one here. Um, I, I hope this doesn't happen with every single one where I'm like, this one is my favorite. Now this one is my favorite. Is this your, is this your new favorite? This is my new favorite. <laughs> yeah. oh, all right, all right. Oh, yes. I, I love the smooth movement already. Okay. I think, cool. I think that's so cool that you can do stuff like that in this game. Yeah, it just lets you. Like, that is awesome. Okay, I like this player a lot. They're using focus the way I, I always, like, talked about pre-release, where it's like, you use it as a movement tool or to, like, interrupt exactly. movements. Getting around very quickly. Clip number wow. four is by Duff Ghost. Do we have a new favorite? Duff X Ghost. That's my new favorite. <laughs> I feel like some people are like allergic to Assassin's Focus, which is totally fair. Like I, I completely understand why. Yeah. But on the other hand, I love it when people actually lean into the unique mechanics of, you know, a particular game. And again, Odyssey sure isn't like my favorite game in the series or anything, but I still love it when people lean into its unique mechanics, like things that the broken spear of Leonidas lets you do that like another protagonist wouldn't let you do. You know, I, I really have a lot of respect for players who they, they play a game, they take its tool set and they actually like express it as fully and, you know, thoroughly as possible. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. And I think with Assassin's Focus, I think a lot of people, I guess they think it's it makes the game too easy or it's a bit of like a crutch, I mm -hmm. suppose. Yeah. I don't know. I love it. it. I think it allows for so much more creativity within just the system itself like i agree i agree and the thing is like it's not like the rest of the game is terribly challenging like at, yeah, at baseline either to begin with yeah, yeah like Basim is already a monster from stealth with just yeah. like the the more quote-unquote grounded tools that you have even without it so you don't really gain like that much more power from using it but you do gain the ability to do things that you know, would otherwise not be possible. And so that means that you can apply it in more inventive ways, which I think exactly. is really cool. And, oh, hey, Rapatopoulos. I love this yeah. guy. Okay, wait, can, can you say the name again? Rapatopoulos? Oh, I am saying it wrong. No, I would say, I would say Ropotopoulos and everyone's like, oh, no, you're not saying it right. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to say it? No one's telling me. <laughs> Uh, who knows? That's just how I say it. But oh, okay. I, I know this channel. Uh, I like this guy. I think he's really cool. Um, he's been like, you know, he always leans on showcasing uh, what movement can do in like the newer AC games. And, you know, he, he's been doing that stuff since before. Mirage videos. Yeah. 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 Like parkour showcases. Mm -hmm. I, I really love that he did that because people would come into his comment section being like, oh, you know, um, a movement in Mirage like isn't all that like you don't have to like do this kind of stuff and he kind of just stuck to his guns and kept doing what he found fun and I think yeah. that that's really really cool and I, I just love it when players do that I'm always you know a, a big advocate for that kind of stuff just do what you love do what you find cool 
don't let other people like stop you from doing stuff just because they say that you know it's not worth it and i think he really um helped a lot of people see like what you can do with mirage's parkour and that there's a lot more to it than some people might think yeah yeah so if you just learn what to do and mm -hmm. and that was before uh ubisoft even patched yeah before that update right so yeah so really really cool That is really interesting. Okay, look, movement already. Wow, that pops. Okay, it's this is the one. It has to be. Like, come on, look at this. We're not even halfway in. It's exactly what I was talking about, though. It's like cascades of things happening. This is clean. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, when it's getting reactions like that out of me. <laughs> and finally, oh. at number five, we have Ropotopolis. Still not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but from what you said on the last video, it seems like I'm close enough. Some of you may remember him from the Unity video as well. He actually came quite close to winning that video too, and he's back again with a vengeance here in Mirage. This is so I've sick. I've seen a lot more of his videos since Mirage has come out, and he was definitely cooking with this run. First of all, yes. I love the sheer number of kills you get in such a short span of time. There's clearly lots of planning and setup that went into yeah. this, like with throwing down the trap at the beginning. Like with the other clips, I really like the aerial throwing knife kills and your use of assassin's focus. I appreciate you trying to fit as many many kills into the one minute time span as you possibly could. You, my friend, are a true assassin, and I thank you once again for submitting. But that is- Okay, right, so before you say what the best one was, yeah, I, I'll definitely like take this time to just talk about which one was my favorite. Four and five, to me, were the coolest, just because they use like a lot of this game's uniqueness and systems in a way that, you know, I just love to see. Three had a bit of that as well. I always love when people use focus to move in ways that like shouldn't be possible and that's fundamentally like my favorite thing about that mechanic is that it lets you like break movement in a way that you know allows you to engage with the space in more creative ways especially if you plan ahead which like these clips obviously did but number five like the most recent one we saw is just so cerebral like you can tell that he thought about what he was doing the whole time he he set up everything the setup and payoff is unbelievably strong in five and yet I completely agree like there's no there's no negative effect on that on the flow because it's actually really hard to do that like a lot of the time even like when i'm making clips like these i either get you know cool setup and payoff or i get cool flow and it's right. very tough to kind of combine those two together. But this clip clearly does that. And it it's so cool. Like, so much happens so quickly that there's even, like, you know, the, the red arrow we see, like, kind of making sure people don't miss, like, the pop, yeah. right? Like, so, yeah, for, for that reason, I, I think this one is, is amazing. So on that, I actually have a question for you, if you don't mind. Okay. So when for those of you that make gameplay videos... Where do you, how do you first come up with like, it, like, like he threw down a trap at the beginning? Like, how do you come up with setups like that? Do you plan it in your head beforehand? Do you just kind of play around with it first and find something cool? What, what's kind of the process like for that? So a lot of the time, and everyone has a different uh, method, so I can't really like speak for everyone, but just for myself, for example, a lot of the time for me when it comes to making gameplay videos or gameplay showcases, the way, um... The kind of building blocks of each video come alive is as a result of problem solving so basically as i play i start out by just being like i want to kill all these guards as quickly as possible without like i don't even start out trying to make it look good i start out trying to not make it look bad uh -huh. and so as i play like i'm trying to avoid situations where my movement kind of jitters out or like looks weird 
or I get stuck on something, obviously leg detection, unless it's for an intentional reason, like is not allowed, you know, that's kind of how I start. And so as I go through this iteratively, because, you know, you, you play it many, many times to try to like hammer it down, um, I run into situations where I'm like, oh, I don't end up taking this guard out. And, you know, how do I include him in the rest of the sequence? And so that is when ideas like, hey, maybe I can put this trap down here, kind of start uh, okay. kind of tickling the mind and being like, maybe I can solve this problem in this way. And I don't know if other people approach it that way, but that's definitely how it is for me because you need a baseline. You need something to start with. And then the other yeah. thing is, if I watch back my own clip, uh, once you've already made it, you know, uh, part of the reason these take so much time is because some people do actually like sit on it for a bit and they give it some time to breathe. They rewatch it once it's kind of out of their mind. And on a rewatch, on a review, you kind of notice opportunities for like, hey, what if I did this here? Like, could I do this here instead? And then, see. you know, that that's kind of how these things uh, arise. So it, it's more it's a more natural and organic process for me than um, than it might at first appear. Like, n not everything is planned out. Like, some amount, like, most of it arises from, can I do this? Or, you know, you experience something where the game kind of fights you or the clip you're trying to make fights you. And then it's like, how do I solve this problem? How do I answer this question? Oh, um. Oh, wow. Aaron, that's really cool. Thank, thank you for answering that. Yeah, yeah cause I've always wondered. Like, I see, especially when it comes to like Altair Cell, they got like all these intricate plans. It seems like set up, or they like foreshadow something and then mm -hmm. pay it off towards the end. And I think that's so cool. And I'm just curious how those ideas first come about and stuff like that. So, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I had asked Altair yourself like how he does his stuff, but um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, because that that's actually such a great question. Because that's what it is for me. I mean, and I'm actually a player who is uh, less uh, amazing at the kind of setup and payoff stuff that you see some of these people do. I'm I've always been more of a kill everything as fast as possible player, <laughs> like just raw you know efficiency. And for that reason, like my biggest thing that I can leverage to make a clip entertaining is just speed and like actions per minute, which is why I tend to also favor and and bias toward clips of a similar nature where it's like because i can recognize like the, the effort that it takes right. to, to do stuff like that but by the same measure that's why my mind is blown so much by clips that do feature a lot of great setup and payoff because i'm like sometimes i don't even know how i would approach you know making something yeah. like this i just think it's so cool with assassin's creed as well like there's even now you see like new ways of people doing stuff like it's just like infinite combinations of things you can do in these kinds of videos mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, that's really neat. I think Mirage is an interesting case study for this kind of thing as well because it lets you mod your tools in different ways. And there are still tool mods that we don't see as much of, like, you know, fire knives. Like, almost no one actually uses that. Um, yeah. M a lot of fire damage is actually, like, underused for the most part, even though we do see instances of people, you know, levering, leveraging it to great effect. Like, when guards are burning, they can't detect you, right? And so that gives yeah. you a lot of time to just, like, reposition or, or kill them quickly or, or stuff like that and like using assassin's focus to cut space very fast or place yourself in an exact location for you know an upcoming action is also really really cool and because it it's essentially instant it also lets you max out the value of certain tools like a smoke cloud you know you get to use more of its uptime by cutting space and time with assassin focus than you could if you had to like physically run all the way there yourself for example which yeah. is just the easiest example to understand i will be leaving a like oh thank you thank you and also commenting um <laughs> meanwhile i'm just like did i spell that right <laughs> Also, I gotta say, it's a testament to how good you are at structuring these that, you know, you, you briefly pointed it out where it's like every subsequent one was my new favorite, right? I think uh, 
that is something that you did amazing at because oh thank you that that's pretty much exactly what you what you want from a video like this where like you watch it and then you see the next one and it's like wow that was even cooler and then you see the next one and it's like wow that was even cooler yeah right and so yeah. for, for it to you know keep eliciting that response from me over and over just means that you know you ordered these clips with great intention and i think it turned out really great thank you and of course all the credit goes to the people who sent me the clips of course um definitely yeah this player base has some really really skilled and just like entertaining you know recorders of content and creators of content definitely yeah i i love to see it honestly because it's like years ago you know around 2014 around you know 2014 to 2016 Assassin's Creed didn't really have a ton of a ton of content on on YouTube like neither discussion nor uh gameplay and and gameplay in particular suffered a lot like there was almost no um certainly not the explosion of like stealth choreography and, and gameplay choreography that you have nowadays and so to yeah. see to see it like become this thing where like a lot of people are engaging with it like they're having fun with it they're they're sending clips to each other like it genuinely warms my heart because it's something I always wanted to see the the series like have because at around the time when I first started making gameplay videos for Unity, one of the reasons I did it is because I was really inspired by channels like uh, Prenatural or Stealth Gamer BR, just other stealth creators, but they rarely ever did Assassin's Creed stuff because Assassin's Creed just wasn't taken seriously as a game you could do stealth in. You yeah, know, it was always sure. like, oh, you know, it's a game where you kind of just like brawl your way through, and it's like, uh, yeah, you you can do that, but yeah, I think a lot of people viewed it as kind of mainstream, basic, you know, mainstream, basic, casual, you know, which like, yeah. granted, like it is a lot of those things, but you can also engage with it more deeply than a lot of people thought about, certainly back then, and yeah. now to see people, you know, coming up with these interesting clips, these expressive, you know, gameplay showcases and, and choreographies, like, it just makes me really happy. Oh, man, well, you're kind of like the godfather of it, honestly. I mean, I, I guess, yeah. What, who started the whole trend, so that's all due to you. Yeah, in, in a way, like, it, that, that's something that I, I'm also quite proud of. I mean, I, I did kind of like a silly thing back in the day where instead of calling my video stealth kills, I, I would call them stealth reaper, right? Because, oh, yeah. you know, I'm harvesting every guard in the area. a lot of those back yeah. in the day, yeah. Thank you, yeah. And so I would notice people, like, naming their clips Stealth Reaper, and I'm just like, I know for a fact nobody named their stealth clips like that before <laughs> me. And so seeing so much of that, I was like, you know what? That's kind of cool. Like, wh yeah. where I can, I can show people, like, you can make really cool-looking things with these games, especially because Assassin's Creed is very unique and distinct from other stealth action games, you know? Like... No one moves like assassins move. No one has, like, the kind of tools that assassins have. They're, they're always, you know, we talked about this with Altair Stealth, but they're ever so slightly over the top. You know, they, they have that John yeah. Wick energy, as, as I like to call it. Yeah, and I think, um, like, even for me, like, you're the one who really got me to, like, look into these games more. Because before I watched your videos, I didn't really, like, like, I played the games more casually, and I didn't really think too deeply into like how to use each tool like i think one of my favorite videos of yours uh it was hilarious i remember it very well it was um it was like a a tips video for unity but you were like doing it as like like an opposite day thing yeah, like things not to do yeah or, top no, five ways to suck at ac unity yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's it and uh, i i love that video and i remember learning the trick with the berserk blades from you and all that stuff so yeah, I, I love it. I'm I'm really glad to just, you know, help people out and, and help them enjoy these games. And especially I think Mirage is a great like testing ground for, for all those insights and all that knowledge that we've built up over the years because it you know, it pushes stealth, you know, about as hard as Unity does, where you know, you you never really wanna be in an open combat for long in Mirage. Yeah. You, you wanna use your tools, diffuse the situation. You know, you wanna use your hidden blade a lot more than your sword. Exactly. It kind of encourages you to be more of an assassin yeah which i i really appreciate and i think people have been waiting for for a while and, and hoping oh, yeah, for, for, sure. for a while i'm still you know craving a game that you know empowers and enables both play styles without necessarily like kneecapping the other i think that yeah. is like the, the ideal 
Assassin's Creed game to me, which is, you know, it's part of why I love Brotherhood so much, because Ezio's combat in Brotherhood is unbelievably strong to the oh, point yeah, that sure. it becomes, you know, the main strategy for a lot of players. But also, Brotherhood is the game that, you know, introduces poison darts, where you can just, like, turn someone's eyes off from a distance, oh, right? Yeah, like, that... it, in it introduces the ability to lock someone far away and then throw smoke at them, which is, you know, it's huge. Like, that that changes so much of what you can do. To your point, as you were saying, like a game that could achieve and please like both sides, I, hopefully Codename Red can be that game. I don't know. Well, Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the rumors are that, you know, there are two playable characters, right? Yes, yes. And and that, you know, if, like, I, I, I don't remember like where I read this, but um, they're supposed to be like mechanically different. Yeah, or have like different tools and stuff like that. Right. So that can be a game that leans on that because I think, you know, uh, it, it's it's Quebec, right? That are yes. Right, and so like I think that's an interesting thing because a lot of Quebec's AC games, they have this thing, certainly like the recent ones, where you know you have two protagonists that on the face of it are supposed to be quite different, but when you look at Syndicate and yeah, exactly, Similarly. exactly. When you look at Syndicate and you look at Odyssey, there are not really that many differences between you know, the two protagonists. Like, Jacob and Evie ultimately kind of still play the same. They're yeah. slightly better in some ways, but not in any way that's really going to materially change your experience. And then Alexios and Cassandra are, you know, fundamentally, like, the exact same. Identical, yeah. Yeah. Like, with Evie, it's like, oh, you can turn invisible, I guess, and... Yeah, you're, like, never going to do that. <laughs> I think what largely, like, disappointed me the most about that is, like, Almost all of their animations are the same. Yeah. I've loved, like, unique animations to fit each one. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's something that's in Codename Red. I, I hope they learned a lot from Syndicate. Is my I agree. They can pull yeah. it off better. Yeah, yeah. I hope they learned a lot from both Syndicate and Odyssey. Because, I mean, yeah. it's... Uh, I, I believe it was mentioned that, like, Red is supposed to still be an RPG. Yeah. And so, presumably, that means there's still going to be, like, loot and, and gear. And I think uh, I don't. I think I talked about this with Altier Stealth briefly as well. But I think that is a great move, and that they should hold to that because one of the things that kind of disappoints me about Assassin's Creed is when audiences and players have like a negative reception to a certain mechanic or feature, and then instead of working on it and making it better, Ubisoft tends to just step away from it or side it. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. like that's just no way to iterate. And I think that. The series will be a lot better when those mechanics are allowed to breathe. And like, there was that IGN interview released uh, some time ago where Ubisoft said something to the effect of, we're now making different games for different audiences. So like, we're not making one AC game that is supposed to be all things to all people. You know, we, we have Mirage, which is more like old school, um, in theory. We have, uh, we have, you know, Red, which is supposed to be more of an RPG. And then we have like uh, Hexa, I think it's called, that is supposed to be its own like unique thing like what, what whatever it is that they're doing there yeah and I, I i just made a video recently as well i think it was called assassin's creed has become inconsistent mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a the point i made was more so like uh oh my video just went up i forgot about that i had that scheduled oh nice <laughs> the curse of the pharaohs but anyways uh I was saying, like, I felt like, especially recently, and because you, Ubisoft has so many different studios working on these games at the same time, yeah, a lot of the games failed to build on each other. Yeah. So, like, there are things I really liked in Origins that weren't in Odyssey. There were things I liked in Odyssey that weren't in Valhalla, or even yeah. things in Origins that weren't in Valhalla. Yeah. Like, I think the Hood toggle was such a perfect example of, like, why is that not... That yeah, why did you take that out? Exactly. You already had what people wanted. Why did you mess with it, you know? So it's just weird. Like, they overcorrect sometimes, I think, and it just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree. And I think that the series can only be better if, um, you know, with this new structure and, and this new format where it's like, this team gets to iterate on the things that make their games unique, and this team gets to iterate on the things that make their games unique. And they don't have to, like, play hot potato with the series and and like gut features that you know another team used for example like Absolutely. hopefully that's how it actually ends up because that's what i yeah. want it to be so you know the 
the answer to, hey, you know, loot itemization in Odyssey had some issues. Like, the answer to that was not nuke itemization. Get rid of all the loot. <laughs> yeah, to the point where in Valhalla you get, like, five pieces of gear throughout the whole game, and, like, none of them actually do anything. Yeah. Right? Like, that was not the answer to that. The answer to that was iterate on this system and improve its downsides. And, you know, make it feel less punishing to players who wanted to play a certain way. And hopefully, like, Red does that and, you know, leans on that and, and doesn't do the thing where it's like, let's just get rid of the stuff that, you know, that almost worked. Because that's the thing, like, a lot of these things, they're not, like, fundamentally, like, broken or, or incompatible with the series. They just almost worked. They almost fit. And so... I agree, yeah. Like, imagine how cool and how great AC could be if each game and each, like, studio's game was allowed to iterate on those like almost great aspects exactly and like another series i've been really into lately like resident evil i love yes just, yes they build on each other every time like if assassin's creed could be that right now we'd have like an insane assassin's creed game i think because we keep building from you know unity or syndicate or even the origins and everything yeah but too often they overcorrect or take feedback the wrong way yeah like, that happens a lot I appreciate that they, I like, I appreciate them listening to the feedback from Valhalla, but I think they misunderstood what exactly the problems were. I agree. That people were uh, complaining about. Yeah. Like with the loot, like you mentioned, or like social stealth and how they brought that in, but it wasn't really like very involved with the game much at all. Yeah. So, you could safely ignore it for like 99% of the experience yeah. and you wouldn't be hurt at all. Exactly. So. I think, and I think a lot of that too, like, because they have so many different studios, it's much easier to build on your own work. If it's different people trying to, like, I think this is really obvious to me with, like, Unity and Syndicate, right? Yeah, because yeah. Because Quebec did something completely different. Like, they made some good improvements from Unity, but then there's other changes they made where you're just like, why? Why yeah. did you do that? Things that also weren't carried forward that, like, yeah. would have been great. Definitely. I like how you brought up Resident Evil because um, Resident Evil was kind of there for me at a time when I was not really feeling Assassin's Creed all that much. Uh, and Kind of the same for me, honestly. But Yeah, and I think that it's kind of funny. Like It's a series I recommend a lot of Assassin's Creed players try out because there are some unexpected similarities between them. I mean, especially like in, in the early RE games, like early in the timeline, I mean, you're fighting against a... a mega corporation that has a stupid amount of control in in the city it's based in and um i think i make this comparison a lot but the feelings that you get from planning out your route through a room or you know an expedition out from a safe room are very similar in my head to the feelings i get when i plan and execute a cool stealth chain in an ac game because both resident evil and assassin's creed lean heavily on using items to like get yourself advantages you would otherwise not have it's just that the tuning of those is, is quite different i mean assassin's creed lets you throw items out like candy and then yeah. resident evil is like that's not so much the case you gotta pick and choose the best moments to use it yeah yeah and did you enjoy uh, the re4 remake i did yeah i i liked it quite a lot i i do think that um Unlike the other games, it, it gets a little rough, like, the higher you push the difficulty. I think, like, some of the systems in the game do fall apart a little bit when you do that. Yeah. But the game itself was was amazing. I, I really liked it. Yeah, and, I, I loved it. And I, I played the original. I didn't play it when it came out, so I didn't have, like, the nostalgic view of it that a ton of people did. Mm -hmm. But I, I loved both. The original is still really fun, too. But, yeah, that game was a lot of fun for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Resident Evil is definitely a series that is close to my heart. And I think that um, a lot of people see it and they're kind of like intimidated to try it or they're pushed away from it because it's horror. But yeah. I think that people overestimate how scary Resident Evil actually is. Like when you actually they're play really, them yourself, yeah. you'll realize that they're much more gameplay focused than than a lot of those people might believe. I agree. And I think like... It, it, it's resident evil kind of has a bit of a split as well with like you know action and horror so yeah yeah i mean there's that whole debate but i i mean i love both so it's like 
it, it just works for me. And I think probably the scariest game for me was Seven. I love Seven as well, but I also love Seven. Yeah. yeah the the scariest good. game for me was Seven, and the scariest moment for me was in Village. Oh, the uh, uh the house. <laughs> house Beneviento. Oh my God, that that moment is what like makes me not want to replay the game. <laughs> Genuinely. Oh man, did you play the DLC? Uh, Shadows of Rosia, I did. Like when it, it, there was a section in that house, right? And when I got to that part, like with the dolls chasing, I'm like, oh my god, not again. Yeah, and and that's like, such an god. iconic like horror mechanic as well that you know people might have seen from other media, where it's like you have to stare at them, otherwise, you know, they'll get you. Like you guys really put the scariest part in the same location two times in a row. Come on. Yeah, it's genius too because like your mind already has associations, and so when you're yeah. in that space, it's like, oh god, not again. Gonna bring it back to Codename Red really quick. You were mentioning like because it's dual protagonist, it could probably do a better job of yes. kind of appealing to both sides. Yes. So this was kind of my concern with it, and I, I brought this up in a recent video. It was my Codename Red wish list, and let's say you're playing as the combat oriented character mm -hmm. with all that kind of tools for someone like me and like like us who largely prefer stealth are you going to be forced to play as this character and like do stealth because like if if that's the case you'd rather play as like the stealth archetype right, right. so i'm a little bit curious and concerned how they're going to balance that and i'm curious what you think they could do to pull mm -hmm. that off yeah that's a good question so i think um you know how in Syndicate there were some missions that you could only play as Eevee and then some missions yeah. that you could only play as Jacob, which was of course most of the game, sadly? I yeah. think that that's one, one way they could handle it. And of course you remember uh, the open world stuff, the stuff that you know didn't have like a preset or predefined character. You could play as right. either Jacob or Eevee. I played most of the open world stuff as Eevee just because oh, I found too. her cooler. Um, yep. And so I think, yeah, I think that's something that uh, Red could do as well, where they could have a bunch of missions where um, you can play them as, like, whatever character you choose. And I don't know if it's going to be a thing where, like, you pick one at the beginning and stick with them, or you can, like, swap between them whenever you want. Like, I'm not really sure how they're going to handle that, because in Syndicate, you could swap whenever you want, but in Odyssey, you know, as you know, you pick one and that's that's your lot. Like, you stay with them for the whole playthrough. Yeah. If you can play as both, uh, and if their stories are, you know, if they both matter and they're connected, then I imagine what they could do is kind of like a like a hybrid between the two, where, you know, you could play most of the game as whoever you want, and then some memories or some missions you can only play as one character, and some memories or missions you can only play as the other. And so basically each character gets a chance to be expressed in gameplay, and then yeah. you can also doing it that way lets them design specific missions for each one if they genuinely do play quite differently which i think would be really interesting yeah i mean i hope that's the case uh, yeah i think that would be the best way to do it yeah i agree and like if they were just the same again like jacob and evie it'd just be like well what's the point of having two different characters yeah exactly i think everyone would be same. disappointed yeah yeah and the current leak right now from like the concept of the story it's like yeah, I haven't kept up with it. What What is it? Yeah, here, I'll fill you in. So it's that they're going to start the game as... Both characters are going to start the game as enemies. Oh, interesting. And then, yeah, and because they're like from rival clans or something like that. Okay. And then over the course, they're going to become allies to help unify Japan and, uh, you know, fight injustice and all that. And I'm curious how the assassins are going to fit into that as well. But yeah, I yeah. think it's a really interesting concept. Yeah, that kind of makes some sense. I mean, uh, when you think about it, just like super like off the top of my head, like if there's a character who's more stealth heavy and a character who's more combat heavy, maybe the reason they're opposite factions is because, you know, one is more Templar associated and one is yeah. more Assassin associated. And then through coming together, they realize actually like we need to, you know, it could almost be like a better iteration on unity's concept where it's like we sort of have to work together right. to like prevent this country from falling into like destruction or whatever that would be so cool actually yeah if they did something like that i think like that would be really cool i, I would enjoy that a lot yeah uh, and are you aware of like the leaks for what they're doing to stealth as well have you heard those uh not that much i i just know that like apparently you can you can lie down like you can go prone oh yeah yeah there's gonna be prone in tall grass apparently and they're having like kind of like splinter cell almost where you can like distinguish light sources to oh, hide in darkness and stuff like that. That's yeah. cool. 
Yeah, See, I think I, I mean, that's something that was probably interesting to a lot of people, you know, if, if they do keep up with leaks and rumors and the like, because you wouldn't expect, you know, just from Quebec's previous games for stealth to be such a, you know, focus exactly. for them. And yet here we are, like if, if it's if it's real and if it's true, like that would be really cool. I, I think that would be very appreciated by a lot of people. Yeah, and my hope is because I think a lot of people's like biggest complaints or issues with Odyssey was stealth. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping they heard that feedback and they're like, all right, that's going to be like our main area for improvement here. Right. And I mean, if those leaks are true, that sounds like a pretty cool way to do it. So yeah, I hope that ends up working out. Yeah. Like the biggest criticisms like around Odyssey were stealth doesn't always feel rewarding. Um, it didn't really feel like too connected to Assassin's Creed's like vibes as a story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, loot had some problems where you were just constantly like the loot grind was basically too heavy and, and too present and you were in menus a lot. And so mm -hmm. if they address those those points, I think that there is a chance that this becomes like a quite a good game, even for people who are kind of like Odyssey haters, as it were. Yeah. And that, I think something that could be really beneficial to it. And I know you're a big Ghost of Tsushima fan as well. So definitely I'm, I'm hoping to have something like the lethal difficulty from that game. Oh, yes. Where you have less health enemies have less health or you do more damage enemies do more damage yeah yeah i think like the damage sponge kind of combat from odyssey really turns a lot of people off so yeah yeah i think something like that could be so great for assassin's creed it would be awesome to see i feel the same i mean i i've talked about this so many times like what is my ideal ac combat system it's basically lethal from ghost of tsushima yeah. where you do a lot of damage and enemies also hit you really hard because Nowadays, we never, and I mean, we never really have gotten to express the, the glass cannon archetype and playstyle in Assassin's Creed. Like, not really, when you think about it. I think the closest to that we ever got was, like, AC1, because you could counter everything with a hidden blade and it would die instantly, but Altair doesn't have a ton of sync himself. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Brotherhood, where you're just so lethal and so fluid, you just carve through, like, an entire swarm of 16 guys with your hidden blades, mm. and they all just drop like flies, right? But, yep. you know, in Brotherhood, you can stack so much HP that basically nothing can threaten you, realistically. <laughs> so, I think it would be really cool to see something like that. And it, it fits, like, the Assassin's Creed vibe and fantasy so much. Like, I think part of the reason I, I so strongly push for this kind of tuning and this kind of difficulty is that it would make the gameplay that we see in these games edge a little closer to what the cinematics look like. Like, when you see, exactly, yeah. like, cinematic trailers or, you know, stuff like that, the assassin doesn't eat, like, a bunch of hits, typically. Like, they just kind of smoothly mm -hmm. cut through their enemies without being touched. And so when you actually play the game, like, you would want players to behave in, in a way similar to that, but most of the series doesn't really work that way. I think it would just make it a lot more, not only realistic, but, you know, more immersive, more grounded. And, yeah. I mean... I w if that were the case, I'd probably turn off health bars because I don't feel like I would... Yeah, you, you wouldn't know. really need them at that point. And it would yeah. also feel more rewarding to improve at the game and, and get better. Exactly. And yeah. adds a lot more suspense to your encounters and you get got to really pay attention. You can't just counter yeah. attack. And so yeah. I think that would also fit perfectly with the, the thing that I asked for earlier and that I, you know, my wish, my desire is for an Assassin's Creed game that, you know empowers stealth and also empowers combat and neither one of them really suffers for the other you know yeah in in that kind i think ghost of tsushima and letho is actually perfect in that regard because you want to use stealth because combat is threatening to you but also when you do enter combat you're not like wasting your time battering down you know people's health bars for an hour exactly yeah yeah we need sucker punch to make an ac game yeah i mean uh, apparently Ghost of Tsushima 2 will be announced at some point, and hopefully we see more oh, yeah, urbanization and more buildings and more stuff like that in that. I think that could be cool, because Sucker Punch are not strangers to creating cityscapes. You know, the Infamous series yeah. that they did, like, they they were full of that, and, and you know, Infamous, uh, around the time, it was releasing around the time of, like, AC1, AC2, AC Brotherhood, like, Infamous already had a bunch of, like, parkour you could do on buildings and stuff, and you could climb your way up buildings so you know they they have experience making stuff like that so it could be really cool 
Yeah, and again, we talked about earlier, but like, I'm just so excited for the PC release and the sequel, which yes, apparently there's going to be a movie too, so... Oh yeah, the movie is being directed by the director of John Wick. Oh, I love John Wick, so sign me up. Yeah, and, and it's perfect. I mean, it, it's, it makes Seriously, so much I, sense. I, I can only imagine what the action's going to look like in that, I mean... Yeah, it's going to be very well choreographed and, and stylish and, and smooth, which is exactly what you yeah. want from a Ghost of Tsushima movie, I feel. Do you mind? I also wanted to ask you about um, Hexa or Hexi, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, I just um, call it Hexa. I don't. I don't know if that's like Hexa. exactly correct, but that that's how I've heard it said. So they've coined it as the darkest AC game ever, which very much excites I, me. Yes, very much. Uh, I, 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 me personally, I've always loved when Assassin's Creed gets a little more edgy and isn't afraid to go really dark and gritty yeah with it. that's why i love dc one's story so much yeah. like the templars are so horrible in that game <laughs> oh my yeah and it's also like i know it's not everyone's favorite but i want to get some ac3 appreciation because i really yeah. enjoy the tone of that game and yeah. connor as a character so like i love that kind of game and apparently this is gonna be like the german witch trials so oh I'm sure yeah sure they'll be able to do quite a lot with that there is definitely a lot of darkness and human cruelty around that 100 yes. percent. which assassin's creed you know it, it is really or used to be really good at like dealing with and, and shining a light on and just using it to add flavor to to the gameplay and to the story right and so we still don't really know what type of game it's going to be obviously I've right. heard of, like a couple rumors which i think the most interesting one and the one i'd probably be like most excited to see is it's going to be like an uncharted style of game oh yeah so like more linear more, yeah more linear like semi open world and focused on a lot of set pieces and stuff like that which i think could be really cool if they probably right. also means like better presentation as yeah, well that's... because that's that's really like what makes naughty dog games feel the way they are is their presentation their acting like is generally quite good Especially with it being, it's going to be like, it would be a lot more f of a focused game, I imagine. And yeah, yeah. It would have to be smaller and tighter in order to achieve yeah. that. So hopefully the presentation would accompany that. But I And mean, it I'm makes sense because think about it. Like what is one of the, one of the most common series-wide criticisms Assassin's Creed consistently receives is that its presentation has plummeted and gone downhill. I mean, I think you even have a video on this where... Yes, um, downgrade of cutscenes. It's yeah. on the right there. Uh, yeah, the downgrade of yeah. cutscenes, Ubisoft storytelling is regressed. I would say both of these are absolutely correct and accurate. And I think if if the rumors about Hexa are true, where it's going to be a smaller, tighter experience that leans on presentation more, maybe tries to like do more of the Naughty Dog thing, like I think that would be a very sensible response to these criticisms. Absolutely. I mean, not that I expect like a Naughty Dog. Quality. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not expecting Ubisoft. that level from Ubisoft. If, if we can at least get just get somewhere near that, like yeah. kind of style. Yeah. You know, and also like it's also very exciting because you know like Darby McDevitt's writing the story for the game. So yes. I'm like, okay, I got yes. a lot of faith in this. Yeah. And um, I really hope that they continue that modern day from where Valhalla left off because and I you and Altair Stealth were talking about this. I'm like. I gotta know what happens next with that. Yeah. What's that, going on with Basim? Is yeah. Desmond potentially coming back? Like, what's going on? You can't yeah. just leave it there. Yeah, yeah. I so. think all of those are really fascinating questions. And I mean, yeah, like, like you said, Darby working on the game is, I think, of special interest to a lot of players because, you know, he had left Ubisoft, right? Like, he... Mm. He was and everyone had on... a heart attack. Yep. Yeah, and I don't think anyone was like happy about that. I mean, they were they were happy for him because they were supporting the guy, and it's like, hey, you know, yeah. like, you know, best of luck, like, good good wishes, you know, best wishes wherever you're going, whatever you're doing. But also, the news that he was coming back and and he's working on the game, like, that I think was huge for a lot of people because, you know, it it got people thinking and and speculating where it's like why like what kind of power did they give him you know to like yeah. to make him agree to do this exactly and it's like hopefully that means he get he has a lot of creative control a lot of narrative control and you know we get to see something that is you know emotionally interesting properly dark you know explore because like that that's one thing that i i think is uh really interesting about darby is that he, he doesn't 
he's not uncritical toward the assassin brotherhood and in fact like you know we, we saw that in revelations we saw that with the audio logs in valhalla where he had this exploration where he's like hey you know like assassins they're not you know, they, they have flaws as a faction, as right. an organization. And I think it's really, really cool to, to see that kind of thing. It, it makes the texture of the universe a lot richer and a lot more interesting to, to engage with. I definitely agree. And I say this as someone who's like a massive, you know, assassin, team assassin. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I, you would never catch me playing same, a Templar. Same here, but I yeah. love when it kind of portrays the assassins in a more kind of in that gray area so to speak yeah i like, mean you have to be pretty messed up in order to strap a wrist knife to yourself and commit like yeah, acts of terrorism exactly. to political figures right like and, and yeah and so often they're portrayed in kind of like the heroic sense or the heroic. yeah i've never seen assassins as heroes quote unquote exactly. like at, at best what they do is for the greater good but like that doesn't mean that their acts in the micro level are good yeah Definitely agree with that. And uh, it's like, I, I really would like to see a game that leans more into that because... Yeah, pulls Rogue, back to that a little. Yeah, with Rogue, it was like... Rogue felt like it was about to do that, and then it just went off the rails. It was like, oh yeah, no, assassins are just evil now. I'm like, um, well... Yeah, no. <laughs> like, we, we need a balance there. They're not just... Like, you uh, can't... It just made both factions, like, very out of character by, like, swapping yes. their name tags, almost. Exactly. And that didn't really, like, feel... um, Like, the veracity and the verisimilitude and, like, the believability of the world was just completely shattered because... Yeah. No player who's played the series for this long is going to believe that, like, these factions would behave this way. It really, like, kicked people out of the immersion and the experience quite a lot. 100% really hoping that you know hexa does something cool with that i mean the darkest game like that could mean anything you know yeah for um, sure i hope that that is reflected atmospherically as well i mean all we really know about it visually and aesthetically is the little teaser like the little clip that they showed during like the ac15 yeah. celebration or whatever where it's like this dark forest you hear like hunting dogs like howling and barking mm. And then you see, like, the assassin insignia, like, made of, like, bones and twigs, right? Yeah, like, atmospherically, it's already... Yeah, like, I want more of that. Like, do not, yeah. do not like, lean away from that. Like, that's exactly. what I want. And in terms of, like, we were talking about, like, you know, assassins being portrayed, like, more... And nuanced, I don't want yeah. To, yeah, I don't want to say evil, more nuanced. That's a good word, way to put it. And it's, like, I love, like, personally, like, my favorite type of protagonist to watch are anti-heroes. Same, so, same. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I gravitated towards Basim so much when I first saw him in Valhalla. It's like... Yeah, he's my very, favorite in years. Yeah, it's just, like, a very morally ambiguous character. And it's, like, I, I love when you can... Like, my favorite, my favorite character in fiction in general, really, is Aaron Yeager. Because, like, you can have so many discussions about what, whether or not what he's doing is justified or not. Right. I love stuff like that. With Basim, especially towards the end of Mirage, it's like, that version of him is the version I want to play as. Yeah, and we never really got to to do that. I feel like exactly. I, I have this criticism toward Mirage's story where, and it seems a little cruel and a little harsh, but I genuinely do feel this way. I feel like by the time Basim became the character I wanted to actually like be, the game was over. Exactly. Like I, I still enjoyed playing as him and seeing like, this coming-of-age thing, but yeah. I think that time period now from the end of mirage to where we see him in valhalla it's like i gotta see something from him yeah there. yeah whether it was a dlc or another game but mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's too likely to happen unfortunately but yeah it probably doesn't seem that way which is a shame because like yourself like i would have loved that that would have made me really yeah. really happy yeah, and i also just want like more continuity with these games as well i agree know? there once was a time where they felt like you know more tied together and yeah, bounced off each other a little bit more which i get that part of the reason why that was possible back then is because th the universe was smaller because they had created a less of it at the time right and so i i never got the sense that assassin's creed had like a much of a plan to be honest with you it always kind of felt like they were laying the tracks as they went yeah. but the difference is that back then there weren't as many tracks behind them yet and so it, it gave you the the feeling and the sense that like oh everything is more connected and more planned out whereas nowadays like i i feel like they actually do need to plan a lot more than they're doing in order mm -hmm. to like give us that feeling again because more of the universe exists now exactly and i 
I had finally watched Assassin's Creed Lineage. For some reason, I hadn't seen it for the longest time. But I, I was watching that. I'm like, man, Ubisoft put so much time and effort into Ezio's story from the start of Lineage all the way to Embers. I long to see something like that again in this series where they really have to plan a story out for a character over years, essentially. Yeah. No one else got that same kind of attention. And um, I understand the reasons for why, but that doesn't mean I have to like them. You know, yeah. like I, I, I still I, I still want to see another character get like as much exploration as Ezio. And it doesn't have to be the same kind of character. It can be anyone. But the thing exactly. is, like part of the reason why Ezio is so, you know, quote unquote, charismatic and beloved and, and a fan favorite, like surely people have to recognize that it's because he simply had so much exposure. Very like, much so. Like, yeah. you can't tell me that someone like Connor wouldn't have been better received by people if we had spent more time with him. Agreed. And I, I love Connor. I'm a Connor fanboy, but. Yeah, Connor is um, cool. Exactly. He's got this, uh, like, a lot of people had a. I think one of my favorite things I've watched from AC is Noah Watts' interview with Loomer, mm -hmm. the Assassin Den podcast. Yeah. He yeah. talked about how he was kind of channeling Altair and like his kind of cold stoic uh delivery yeah because he felt that's how an assassin should sound and talk and i love that and I, yeah to me that's like when that's what i think about when i think of assassins it's like a very ruthless kind of cold precise killer yeah yeah so yeah and so and then also like that cinematic trailer was just one of the most badass things I'd ever seen when I first saw it, so... Yo, the way he, like, sweeps aside the guy's oh coat God. to reveal the Templar cross, like, oh. yes. And I was like, he's just going against this entire army by himself, and everyone's looking at him like he's insane. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, it gave me chills. And, like, that's exactly what, what I think has been kind of missing from the series for quite some time, is this idea of, you know, the assassin doing ever so slightly like just above human things where if you trained really hard and you like fully let go of all fear you know in theory you might be able to do the same but you would have to be like a crazy person yeah pretty much yeah like i i miss that from from assassins and i i would like to see more of it agreed and to ac3 as well i i think haytham is probably my favorite assassin's creed character in general personally so yeah he's very magnetic and like interesting to watch he's very entertaining yes. whenever he's on the screen yes he's very like charismatic as well almost like he he makes you want to side with him and believe him yeah yeah so like i i think that's what makes him so so great as a character is like the writing and the performance just really kind of work together like perfectly yeah. because when you take a step back and, and you examine his ideas, like, it, it would lead to quite a worse world for a lot of people. But at yeah, the same time, sure. when you're standing beside him in the moment, he really just takes you along and kind of makes Very you forget true. about all that. Like, that, that scene on the that iconic scene on the rooftop, like, I think that scene single-handedly changed how so many people thought about the Templars. Yeah, the time. absolutely, yeah. People realized, like, oh, like, I get it now. I get why people are, are swept up in their ideology, because yes. it, it makes you, you know, give them a chance, basically. Absolutely. I love that, yeah. And I think that's, that's a, you know... It's funny, like, why Assassin's Creed villains are so lackluster, that's also part of it. Like, we, we don't really get, like, as entertaining Assassin's Creed antagonists anymore. Agreed. And I, I think that's, you know, something that is, like, a, a hugely missed opportunity. I mean, like, look at someone like Cesare Borgia, right? He's not, like, yeah. the most complex character in the world by any means. And yet, Definitely not, people but... really loved him as a villain because he's just so easy to hate. Yeah, and he's, like entertaining yeah he's fun to watch on the screen you hate him you want to put a knife in his throat like you need that you know for sure and instead of like how it's been recently where it's like big reveal monologue explain why they do the things they do and then they die and it's like yeah well, i can't really hate this person because i just met them pretty I much just found out who they are like two minutes yeah. ago yeah i think exactly. that you know part of um like, oddly enough, in Origins, an example of that where that sort of did work wasn't even with the main antagonist. It was with the Scarab. Yeah. Where, like, actually... 
you you hear the effects of like what this this person has been doing and and like how cruel his mm -hmm. you know his plans and his actions are and then you get the reveal and then you're betrayed at the same time and then you realize oh my god it's actually so much worse than than i even imagined and then you put him down and it's like wow you know that actually kind of works but you can't really do that with every every single character and you spend so much time with like his family beforehand as well they really want to make you like feel for the guy and like oh, yeah he's doing yeah. great things and then what i love about that as well is there's actual consequences to killing him yeah for because his son his son hates you and then in the dlc, in the DLC he, he fights you kill you yeah, yeah it's, he becomes a boss fight like that is so cool that is probably like one one of, if not possibly, my favorite storyline in that game. So yeah, I think that entire storyline like is definitely like my favorite. And as you say, like the fact that there are still consequences and it, there's follow through on it, like in the DLC, yeah. we almost never get that in Assassin's Creed anymore. About two years ago, I made like a. It's probably one of my favorite videos I've ever made. It's a game basically with Arno, Connor, Shay, and Avalyn called it Assassin's Creed Vengeance. Basically what I did is I wrote an entire script for that potential game that could have happened because I felt like when those games were coming out, that's what it felt like it was building towards to me, right? Yeah, like, yeah, especially coming off the back of the Ezio trilogy, which did have that kind yeah. of interconnected vibe. And that, that also would have been a great way to make the modern day a bit more cohesive with all those games and everything. But I wrote that entire story and I, I really like i really like to write like stuff like that like i hope to write a book someday as well like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff really speaks to me and so yeah that was my favorite video and some people were saying like oh that wouldn't happen because you know arno wouldn't want to seek revenge over shay so like my idea was like okay well what if shay makes an attack on like the brotherhood in france and so arno has no choice but to get involved you know because shay was there yeah, like, yeah what was he doing during unity right so i think that's really interesting because you know something that like people are right that sure arno probably wouldn't seek revenge for emotional reasons but i think that that is a story that is played out in assassin's creed and people do kind of feel a little bit of fatigue around it anyway and so there are other reasons to seek revenge and there are other reasons to be in conflict with an enemy than um than emotional ones absolutely and i think that that would actually be a very interesting story and a very interesting exploration where you're not going to kill this person because you know you feel personally wronged by them you're going to kill this person because it makes sense for your faction exactly right like that would be and then, like, I mean, and then icing on the cake if Arno found out. Just it's like, a moment of recontextualization, which, you know, exactly. those lead to some of the best scenes with some of the most interesting dialogue across all the fiction. Definitely. And he may not, like, seek vengeance, but he's definitely going to feel a certain type of way about finding out this guy killed his dad. Like, right. So, yeah, I think that could have been so cool. That's, like, one of the biggest missed opportunities in the series for me personally is, like, just something with all of them it could have worked so well i feel like yeah they could also have interesting dialogue because you know shay is someone who felt betrayed by the assassin brotherhood and there were times when you know there there are seeds of that in arno's as well you know like he, yeah. there are moments where he also kind of felt thrown under the bus also felt kind of betrayed by them i mean yeah he was exiled as well so. he was exiled right like they have that in common belek you know made moves to like harm Elise, right which yep. obviously like arno did not love <laughs> you know there's the moment where shay has to kind of like kill hope as well which you could kind of tell like he really didn't want to do it like even more so right. than the others like there was that yeah, that was definitely the one that hit him the worst yeah i mean like i the game doesn't have my favorite story but it has moments that hit pretty well for me and you know when he's killing hope he's like i can't do this and she's like i trained you to do this like that that just hurts mm -hmm. you know like yeah and like that, that that's just proof that there was like seeds of something really great in rogue that the execution was a little bit off on but mm -hmm. i think uh i'm like also with connor and shay that would be super interesting they both basically had the same mentor in achilles as well yeah so and they became like, such different people exactly it's almost like this kind of like star wars situation right so where it's like oh that's my old master and the apprentice and everything like that i just think that would be so cool so yeah yeah a, a lot of great room for tension there where you know shay is like you don't know what he was really like right yeah and yeah. what's really interesting is like in ac3 achilles clearly has a lot of guilt over the mm. events of rogue 
and the way yes. he trained and raised Connor was quite different as a result of that. And so then Connor could kind of, you know, clap back in his own way where he's like, yeah, but you don't know what he was like near the end. You know, like exactly. he was not the same man you remember. Like there's there's a lot of cool opportunities for stuff like that. Even even Connor comes to terms like in his deleted monologue, which I wish they kept in the game because I felt like it showed so much growth from him. Yeah, it was like his realization that the world's not as black and white as he thought. Like, it's not as simple as doing the right thing and everything will work out. Yeah, like, the, the path ahead is shrouded in darkness, but I yes. must walk it nonetheless, right? Exactly, and he's kind of... Because he's very naive through a lot of the game, but that kind of... He kind of realizes, like, what Haven was saying to him mm -hmm. was actually justifiable in a sense. So, yeah, I just think that dynamic would be so interesting. What, what one was Unity and Rogue were... 10 years ago almost already so i don't see them doing it now but yeah, pretty much exactly 10 years ago 2014 right yeah so like november maybe right so yeah i feel like the series is very quick to move on from its characters at the same time like it still tries assassin's creed even though it moves on from its protagonists way too quickly inadvertently still makes its universe feel quite small because everything always has to be about a piece of eden everything always has yeah. to be about like this or that where it's like sure we often don't get to see stories in different settings that kind of just are what they are, right? Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think that, you know, that's why, you know, a, a lot of people are speculating, like, for example, what is Hexa going to do? Like, is it going to be, you know, because it's about, like, witches and witchcraft, right? Like, t to some extent. Yeah. And so instantly people's minds jump to, well, there's probably a piece of Eden involved. Because if you read the uh, the Assassin's Creed Assassins or Uprising comic series... Uh, there is uh, a story in those comics that's about uh, the witch trials in, in Salem, like in, in the US. And so there, you know, I believe a piece of Eden is briefly involved, or, or at least someone with the abilities of one. Um, yeah, I could definitely see them doing that. I'm... And so I to me, though, I'm, I'm like, I actually don't want pieces of Eden involved in hexa if if possible just because i feel like we see it so much we see it all the time to the point where in in valhalla it almost hit it's like boiling point where <laughs> by the end of that game's uh, title updates eivor had collected like you know five or six pieces of eden like across across the land and it's like you know what it's getting a little ridiculous like yeah, th I... these are supposed to be ultra rare you know very very like scarce objects that have like unholy power right like like perfect example i literally just made a video on curse of the pharaohs and origins but the apple of eden is like a huge plot in that plot point in that game as well it's like yeah it's it's the cause of everything so many times yeah like what like he's found it like two or three different times if you include the base game as well so yeah it yeah, just it really stretches the smaller. believability exactly yeah yeah and so if they you know, for Hexa, whatever they decide to do with it, like, that is my personal, like, you know, one of my bullet points, one of my wish list points, where it's like, I hope that they kind of err away from just making the explanation for everything a piece of Eden did it. Right. Right. Uh, you don't even really necessarily need it in the story either. Like, it could, you could make a very engaging, entertaining story without it. It's yeah. It's not necessary. Yeah. I, I think that people are just, like, they don't obviously like with something like witches for example like the first word people think of is magic and then like that immediately puts them on edge and on yeah. guard where it's like you know magic doesn't exist in assassin's creed which like it does not but also think about the team making this game like i i don't think montreal would you know infringe on that yeah in in, in an irresponsible way or at least I, I would hope not i would hope not yeah yeah exactly. like th their track record shows that at, at the very least they try to take that seriously where it's like magic does not exist in ac and so with that in mind i don't think we need to jump to a piece of eden in order to justify you know crazy abilities in fact i don't think we're gonna have crazy abilities i think that it'll be it'll involve different things because i mean when you think about like witches at the time they were they were a pretty like politicized group of people where they were persecuted and, and, and killed, like, quite quite a lot, right? Just for, for, like, being what they are. 
put them through all those tests and like, oh, prove you're not a witch. Well, how can I prove it if I can't? Like, like, you know what I mean? Is yeah, like how how do you prove something that like isn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like oh well, if you don't drown here, we'll know you're not. If you don't if you don't drown, we'll know you're a witch. Well, if I drown, I die. So it's like yeah, really cool deal you're giving me here. Yeah. The final thing I kind of wanted to ask you about, I know we've been talking for a long time, I'm sorry about that, but... All good, all good. Do you think it's a smart idea to do a Black Flag remake? Like, does it make sense to you personally? And then also, what do you think they would change, and what would you change about Black Flag? If I'm looking at it from, like, Ubisoft's POV, it's absolutely a smart idea to do a Black Flag remake. Yes. Like, from their perspective, I can easily see why they would do that. And the reason for that is, and, I, and I've talked about this before several times, is that... Black Flag is, like, in quotation marks, the best Assassin's Creed game. Mm -hmm. in the selling. Yeah, in the sense that it is, a, it is, you know, one of the most successful games in the whole series, if not the most successful, you know, by, by several metrics. Um, it's a game that you can enjoy both as a hardcore fan and as someone who is knows nothing about the series, and it's, like, your first AC game. And so there is a lot of power in that. Like, there is a lot of power in, in a game like that, that, because it's kind of like what they're always chasing, right? Like, how do we make a game that makes everyone happy? How do we make a game where you can enjoy it if you're a hardcore fan? It has a really cool narrative exploration of what the Assassin's Creed is, how it affects people. It has gameplay that, you know, it's got, like, the parkour combat and stealth. And then it also has more exotic elements where if you're not an Assassin's Creed fan, there's something there for you, something that will draw your attention, you know? And I mean, everyone loves pirates. People have been saying to Ubisoft for years and years, like, this is one of the best pirate games ever made, like even outside of, you know, it being an AC game. And, you know, it, its pull and its effect on, on people is so, so great that, you know, part of the reason why Skull and Bones is not doing incredible and why people did not respond to it very favorably, you know, there's a myriad of reasons for, for why, but, one of them is absolutely that like it's it's not black flag you know like it, it doesn't have those things that people loved about black flag and i think it really just goes to show that the reason black flag was so beloved and so popular is not just because it, it's a pirate game where you're on a ship it's because of all the things around it you know it, it 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 lets you play as a pirate like on foot as well that that deals with those things you know and i think that a black flag remake is going to do well basically like yeah. th that's that's like the first thing that we have to acknowledge is that when they release that game as long as they don't mess it up like utterly it is going to do well like people exactly. will buy it and people will love it and it will be reviewed positively it already has so much name value with a lot of people so yeah and then i was thinking like and on top of that you know they also have all this stuff left over and that they learned from skull and bones yeah so it makes sense that they'd want to capitalize on that with a black flag remake as well so yeah it makes sense like skull and bones i feel like was not a great deal for them they were kind of forced to see it see it through to completion because you know they had that deal with like the singapore government and whatnot where it's like you know you have to release the game right yeah uh and so it went through what i would call you know an amount of development hell definitely right and so they got to be thinking like how do we use this to our benefit how do we take advantage of like all this work and, and money that we burnt on this game you know that's one way there's a lot of naval tech that they iterated on for that game that you could easily see how it could be applied to good use in in a black flag remake and on the note of asset reuse and tech reuse a black flag remake would let them reuse assets and tech from a lot of their other recent games as well and you know you ask like what's one thing they would change certainly they would change the combat system like a I black flag yeah and it, it regardless of whether we think it's a good idea or not regardless of whether we think like the original black flag combat was already really fun that is going to be changed like you definitely you know it i know it like everybody knows it so the combat system in, in, in that remake, like, whether it's real or not, like, I, I have to assume that it's real just because it, it makes sense for them to do it. Um, it's probably going to be something closer to Valhalla, right? Where yeah. you have, you know, you're very strong in combat. You can, because, I mean, Edward is very strong in combat in, in the original game. And one of the trailers even 
like calls that out directly like fighting like a devil dressed as a man right like yeah that, that's a that's a big part of his character you know like he, that entire ships decks worth of ships yeah exactly like he is a he is a good combatant he's a strong combatant he's not just like a stealth character yeah and so certainly like combat is something i would expect to see changed in you know um you would have like the third person aim with your pistols right mm -hmm. uh, you would have you know all that and that that's one of the things i i expect to see to see changed and altered um i agree probably they would use a lot of the naval tech from skull and bones and other than that like they would probably take advantage of their their world streaming tech where in black flag in the original game when you went to a major city the uh, loading screens yeah you would zone into yeah. it after a loading screen so that that probably wouldn't be a thing anymore would be That's a one fully of the big things world. that I feel like could be great about the remake is, you know, you can seamlessly go through the entire world to all the different large cities because it's already pretty much possible in Odyssey, right? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that for sure they'll be able to pull that off. But yeah, I, a lot of people, I know a lot of people want the counter-based combat system to return, but it's like, I just don't see them doing it, so. Yeah, and to be fair, like, you could, you could still feature that in some way, like, yeah, I know Odyssey has that gear set, like the Ezio gear set or whatever, where when you... It's either a gear set or a weapon, I, I forget what it is, but you put it on and when you counter an enemy, like when you parry an enemy, you can basically kill them instantly for the most part. Like it, it significantly increases the damage you do to an enemy you just parried. Yeah. And so the POV of fighting would change, you know, it, it would use like the, the lock and pivot like hitbox system from the mm -hmm. new games. But they could still make Edward feel quite like deadly inside of that. Like I don't, I don't envision Black Flag as being a game with like damage sponge enemies, basically. Yeah, for sure. Just because he uh, is such a strong fighter, and you would want to like convey that mechanically. Definitely, and even with Mirage, they kind of like with the parries, and you can kind of get the counter kill almost pretty much. Yeah, it doesn't really work like how it did in the old games, but yeah, something yeah. like that too. I don't know. Yeah. Balsam is definitely like not as great of a fighter as, as Edward Kenway for sure and so yeah. when you attack enemies head on like you're not really doing that much damage to them but yeah that's, that's something that I would expect for a Black Flag remake is to let Edward be strong in combat and to kind of just cleave through groups of enemies if you were if you knew what you were doing definitely yeah alright well is there uh, anything else you wanted to discuss uh -huh. no like i just want to say thank you for for joining me for for hanging out and talking it's been really cool to Man. to do this thank you yeah thank you for the invite like, like i said it's like a full circle moment because you're one of the reasons i got into it and you also kept me going when i was at a low point when i first started yeah it's crazy how yeah. stuff like that happens like for me i I, I would never have imagined that you know you were even considering like walking away you know yeah and, i mean and that should be a lesson to a lot of people who are starting as well because like so often like when you're at your lowest point or you feel like you're about to quit like that's when you're closest to the breakthrough right so it's just having that persistence and just keep going pretty much yeah Sounds kind of cheesy but it's true yeah i mean that that is very very encouraging advice i would say yeah and i mean oh, uh, go on I'm sorry oh um i was just i was just gonna say before uh, we end this. I want to clue you in on this the video idea I had that we were uh, talking about before. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you you yeah. you suggested like a potential you know thing yeah, we could do I together. I had, like what a fun idea because so you, obviously we already talked about, but I have the series when I die the video ends, and right. I was thinking we could do I could invite you, a couple other creators perhaps like maybe Altair yourself. Um, I don't know who would get the fourth like Jacers or Ropatopolis, someone. I would actually, I would love Ropatopolis as well. And yeah. after I after I watched the you know your your stealth clips video that we just saw together, I would actually love to get Ropatopolis on on this show as well. Oh yeah, um, that'd be great. You should. I'm yeah. sure he's he'll he'll probably watch this. I see him in the comments of your videos before. So awesome. And uh, but my idea was we do Assassin's Creed Unity co-op, but one of, when one of us dies, the video ends. So. Oh, that would actually be super freaky, and I would probably end up throwing DBH. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no, I, I, dies though, not is detected. Yeah, just dies. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So, that was kind of the idea. If you're interested in doing that, that could be cool. Yeah. Yeah, 
And then also, yeah, feel free to hit me up when uh, Ghost of Tsushima comes out and we can do uh, Legends as well. That'd be really fun. Yeah, we can do a similar thing there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, just give me like a couple of weeks to kind of set that up, get some invites, and I'll message you. And hopefully we can set something up. Yeah, that would be a really cool idea. And I think it would be interesting. All right. Would love to also play Legends with all of you when, when that releases. Oh, yeah. That would. Yeah, we definitely got to do that. All righty. Well, thanks for joining, for hanging out. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think people will, will really enjoy listening to this talk. We hit on a lot of really, really cool points that, you know, I'm sure people have been curious about as well. And if you ever want to talk some other time, I mean, like, we have each other on Discord now, so just feel free to ping yep. me. All right. Well, yeah, again, thank you for having me on. Uh, yeah. It's Again, just an honor to be here and to talk to you. It's like, it feels kind of surreal. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, when I started this series, I never thought I would get to talk to so many cool people. I, I thought that it was just going to be, I didn't even think it was going to be a series. I thought it would just be, you know, one or two videos like, hey, let me chill with this person. Let me chill with this person. Like the first yeah. video with Lang was completely spontaneous. It was completely unplanned. And now like I, I get to talk to people that I respect and that make really cool videos that I enjoy. Like semi-regularly and i think that's really cool i hope to keep it going yeah you and definitely should yeah thank you for you know helping out with that and, and being a part of that of course yeah get, get some more people on here it's like really interesting conversations literally the other night i was watching um you and altair self's interview on his channel yeah yeah i was in like i was in like the midst of uploading a video and i I got so into it, I completely lost track of time. Like, I forgot what I was supposed to be doing because I just got so into the conversation. So, I mean, that's a testament to you and you're, you know, you're very good at this, so. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, well, take care. Be safe. Yep. Uh, you too. Keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank and you. I will see you next time. All right, yep, see you around. Bye. Bye.